Hi guys, I just recorded some footage of the needle felting process for decorating my boots and I've got a series of, of hyperlapses and things which I thought you might enjoy watching. Oh, ferret. Go away, ferret. Um, to begin with, you need to fill in the background if you weren't able to wet felt that on. So that's what I'm doing here, just kind of reinforcing the background and defining it a bit as well because the white that I put on there when I was making the boots themselves has distorted slightly so it's not exactly the right shape I want but it still gives me a framework to work around. So I lay the, the tops on and then sort of tack them in place with a few random stabs and then go over them a bit more methodically to make sure it's all thoroughly felted in there. Then some details around the face there. I did have a a little picture open on my uh, phone the whole time that I was using as a visual reference because it's, uh, it's quite important to get the face and the eyes right on these things otherwise the rest just doesn't look plausible. I found as well it's helpful if you use the, the felting tops in the same direction as the grain of the fur or feathers or whatever you're trying to depict. Um, because although it doesn't give you much of a texture, it it does help kind of suggest the fur of the animal. I'm trying to get that nice sweep of the wing feathers there. Oh, change of position. Now I don't have footage of adding the details on the second owl, but this is adding the details on the first one. And you can see it's really just a simple process of adding small almost twists of tops and then felting them in really well just to give all the specks and spots and it's really important to tease the felting wool out nice and thinly otherwise you end up with great big lumpy bits of colour on there um, which is not very pretty but also it could cause rubbing and, and cause those to catch on things when these are in use. Now, although it is quite a meticulous process, it's not really as slow as you'd think. Um, both of these boots were done in maybe a couple of hours each, over a couple of evenings. But it's well worth doing because it really does add a nice finishing touch to them. Depending on how many colours of felting wool you're willing to spend money on, you can actually do quite sophisticated shading. I mean, I chose not to, um, so most of this was done with just white and black and a little bit of yellow for the eyes. But you can buy felting wool in a huge range of shades and it really, the sky's the limit with, uh, with the sort of details and effects you want to create. Then there's the whole field of 3D felting, which I've not really dabbled in yet much. And um, that's that's a thing in itself. That's sort of 3D sculpting on a whole nother level. Just filling in the areas there to make them a bit denser. Like anything though, it is partly about knowing when to stop and <laughs> when to just leave a particular area because I think with, with this kind of felting, if you overwork it, you do start to weaken it because as you're jabbing the needle in you do break fibres and uh, if you if you overwork it too much then you get felt which is unstable and can start to pull apart a little bit. But that's not to say you, you can't actually undo areas. There were a couple of places where I wasn't happy with a piece I'd just put on and you can actually use the point of the needle to just pick that piece off and redo it. It's not ideal, but you can do it. The other thing that, that surprised me is that when you buy felting tops, some of the pretty colours and things are sold in really minute amounts, you know, 15 grams or 10 grams, which is nothing. But actually, for doing the eyes, for example, I used probably less than the amount that would cover my thumbnail. So a really tiny amount um, and, and even for the black I probably used less than a handful for doing both owls so you really don't need very much at all 
I found that my multi-needle, uh, which I mentioned on the main felting video where I actually made the boots, I found that that um, compacted the felt together too much and caused a sort of 3D distortion of it, which I didn't want. So I stuck with just the single needle, which is better for doing these kind of details anyway. And you do get into the rhythm of it quite quickly. So you can see that the shading going on on the top of the head there. It's very hard to do really, really tiny spots. And so areas where the owl should have lots and lots of tiny spots very close together, I ended up doing sort of blobby dotted lines because that was the, the best I could do. If you try and wrap bits of fleece up, they won't felt properly. There we go. I hope that was useful and uh, good luck with your own felting projects.